Well, it's about 6.45 a.m. Beautiful Sunday morning. I have the day off. I'm looking around the kitchen and thinking about how I can prepare some of the food I have for the week ahead. So I have this butternut squash I bought some time ago. And butternut squash is great if you get it, you know, at a low price. Um, it will last you for months and months and months. So I'm going to um, cut this up and bake it in the oven and uh, scoop out the insides and freeze them for future use. This is the most labor intensive part of uh, butternut squash. They are very, very hard to cut. They're hard to peel. They're hard to do everything with. But once they're baked, you can do a multiple, multiple things with them. So I'm gonna start by cutting off the top and the bottom. I have a fairly sharp knife. I do need to resharpen my knives. And like I say, you gotta be real careful. These things roll and um, they're just really tough to cut through. Look at that bright orange uh, <laughs> interior there. They're really good though. They're worth the work. I'm gonna cut off the bottom just to make it easier to cut across. Later, of course, did not get a straight cut, but the world won't come to an end. And there we go, good enough. Now inside is full of seeds. We're gonna cut this uh, long ways and scoop all that stuff out. I don't know if these seeds, I can plant them again. Um, stuff has been hybridized sometimes and GMO'd. I don't have uh, any label on this to tell me what the status of it is. So I'm not gonna uh, bother with it. Now that I've got it flat on both ends, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this in half. And it's a struggle. Again, a sharp knife and a steady hand, and take your take your time with this. There we go. And again, needs to be scooped out. So I'm gonna grab a spoon and uh, scoop all this stuff out of here. Now I just wanna show you something about this butternut squash or any of them. They have a really thick white, um, edge here and I have tried peeling these when they're still um, raw and although I can get the peel off with the regular peeler the top top layer of peel I can't really get this and after it's cooked it stays really hard and I have to cut it off anyway so just a little tip if you want to um, peel your butternut squash first I would use a knife and definitely go deeper than um, than the, the initial peel out here well, I cut the squash in half. I cleaned out the um, insides of it. Not perfectly, but good enough. The rest can be scraped out after cooking. I have them on my one of my um, cast iron griddles here. I have the parchment paper because it just it gets very sticky otherwise. I love using cast iron in the oven because it conducts heat. You could do it on a cookie sheet or anything you want. Just bear in mind that these, these tend to weep a little bit. There's sugar in them. So I'm gonna put these in the oven, and uh, I believe I said 375, anywhere between 375 and 425 is fine. I'm actually going to go ahead, I think, and puncture a couple holes in this. That's a last, last minute thought, just like you would, uh, I guess, a potato or something else. Just let some of that heat in, let some of the vapors out. There we go, it's good enough. So I'm going to put them in and uh, check them in a little while and see uh, how they're doing. They should collapse, you know, should collapse and be soft from the inside um, all the way out. So here they are. They're almost there. As you can see, they ooze quite a bit, which is why you want to have that parchment paper. I've been sticking a knife in there to just see the, judge the softness of them. And when they're really, really, really soft, um, like a puree, I guess, I will take it out. And here's the butternut squash all baked up. You'll know it's done when you can stick a knife in with absolutely no resistance. Um, the neck part is going to be uh, a, going to take a little longer to cook than the rest of it because it's thicker, but eventually it all cooks up. So as you can see, it did spill over here, even onto my pan, so I'll have to figure out how to get that off. So if you're smarter than me, you will cover the whole thing with parchment paper. <laughs> When this is cooled, I'm gonna turn it over, scrape out whatever um, 
seeds or whatever little pieces of stringy little pieces are left and then what you can do with this is uh, simply scrape all of the all of this out it'll be nice and easy to do put it in a bowl and uh, there's a couple things you can do with it um, I like to put some maple syrup some brown sugar and cinnamon maybe a little bit of nutmeg in this and mash it down and it's just absolutely delicious I also use this um, to thicken soups as I mentioned before I do home health care and uh, one of my clients has uh, had a stroke so it's hard for her to drink liquids that are too thin so um, I make her pureed chicken soup and then just to make it a little little thicker I um, add some of uh, this cooked butternut squash to it and it just makes it thick enough that she can comfortably eat it so that's the story on uh, how to cook a butternut squash thank you so much for watching